Today we're going to build a hero section inside our website, which means that we're going to take this website we've been building for the past couple of lessons and we're actually going to start building on it. So a hero section is essentially the part that you see just as you enter the website for the first time, which means that you're trying to sell a product or a service, or in this case here, if you want to build a portfolio, then you want to take them to your cases so you can actually show them what you can do and why they should hire you. So a hero section is very important to have inside a website. So what we're going to do here is we're just sort of going to build the hero section that I've already designed and then you just kind of kind of like follow along. You can use any kind of images you want for this particular project here. If you want to download an image, I do have some links to some royalty free images to, you know, different websites you can go to. So if you don't want to take any images yourself, then you're more than welcome to check out those links below and just sort of Photoshop something that you can use inside these lessons here. Now you will need a couple of images for this lesson here because we will be inserting images into the website. I have personally created a a little template here. This is a pattern that I'm going to insert as a background. I do also have a portrait from a old photo that I found somewhere inside my, my computer of myself. I just sort of cut it out and added a shadow to it. And then I inserted that inside my images folder. So we have a couple of different images that you could be using for your website. So to begin with, let's go ahead and go inside our HTML file and actually see what we have so far and what we're going to change in here. So at the moment we have a actual header inside the website. So right now, if we were to scroll down, you can see that we have the header section. But right now, we don't actually have anything inside the main content of the website. So what we're going to do is we're going to go below the header here. And I'm going to create a main tag because we need some kind of main content for this site here. Now you could just create a section tag if you don't think this is, you know, some of the most important parts of the, the front page. If you have a more important part that you think is a bit more descriptive, a, a little bit more semantic, so to speak, a little bit further down the page later on, uh, then you're of course more than welcome to just use the main tags later on and not right now when it comes to the hero section. So it really, again, it really depends on what you think is important to highlight when it comes to search engines inside your website. Uh, but just know that you can only have one main tag per page. So you can't just say, well, this is important and this is important. And then you just keep using main tags inside your pages. Um, so the most important section inside your site is going to have the main tags. Now, in my case, I decided it's going to be the hero section here. So inside my main tags, what we're going to do is we're going to start inserting different boxes that we can use as content inside our page. So right now I have this design here. And essentially what this design is, is two different sections. We have one section with a introduction. And then just to have some filler on the side, I decided to insert some quotes about, you know, learning or something like that, because, you know, it kind of makes sense since we're learning something together here. You know, just a basic design that I think is really good for when it comes to practicing what we've been learning for these past couple of videos. So we're going to start building this particular design here inside our HTML. So what I'll do is I'll go inside the main tag and I'll create two containers that are going to contain these two pieces of content inside the main hero section here. So what I'll do is I'll create a div container. I'm going to give this one a class so we can actually name it and target it using CSS. I'm going to call this one main dash intro just because this has some introduction text and different elements, a link, for example. Um, I'm also going to go and insert some content in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say we want to have a H1 tag because this is going to be something that describes something inside my website here. Now I do already have some text that I want to insert and I just kind of like wrote something off screen here. So I had something inside the website. Um, so I'm going to paste in some text. As you can see, it says, welcome to my first website, uh, which is very fitting since this is probably the first website that a lot of you are building. Um, I did also went ahead and used something called a break tag. Now a break tag is a empty element, which means that we can just use this one tag and it doesn't have to have a closing tag. And what it essentially does is that it just kind of like breaks the line and then goes down to the next line. So I can decide when I want the line to break inside my website. And because I think it looks prettier when it gets broken like this, I just decided to do it like this instead. Now, if I were to go down, I can also create a paragraph. And in the same way, I'm going to go and insert some random text. I did also prepare some text ahead of time here, and I'm just going to paste it in. And you're more than welcome to just sort of copy paste what it says here. Um, now, essentially, this is what we call placeholder text. This is text that is called lorem ipsum. And it's not a real language, even though I know a lot of people in the comments are going to tell me, oh, Daniel, you're actually mistaken here. It is a real language. This is Latin or something like that. But this is actually dummy text. It's placeholder text that has been created 
created based on random Latin. So it's loosely based on Latin, but it's not a real language that you can speak to other people. So this is what you call lorem ipsum. And there's actually a website that I'll also link below where you can just go in and copy paste lorem ipsum text and it'll actually generate some random gibberish for you. Uh, in case you want something inside your website as placeholder text. It's very useful when you don't know what is actually gonna be written inside your website because it's really good at giving the appearance as real writing inside the site. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go below and I'm gonna create a anchor tag since we want to have a link that takes the, the user to something that the hero section needs to lead them to because you want them to go in and buy your product or buy your service or see your portfolio or something. So what I'll do here is I'll just lead it to hashtag for now, since this is the placeholder when we don't actually have a page to take them to. And I'll also go inside the anchor tag and I'll say my work, just to give it some kind of text here. Now, don't worry too much about my text jumping down to the next line when I save inside this document. That is because I have a plugin installed and the plugin basically just goes in and makes sure that my HTML looks good. So for example, if I were to not uh, indent this and actually save it, then it goes out automatically to make it look pretty. So don't worry too much if things are jumping around when I save my document here. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy paste this container because like I said, we need to have two of them. So I'm gonna go down to next line, paste it in, and I'm gonna change the class. So it doesn't say main intro, but it's gonna say main quotes. Now we're of course also gonna change some of the content in here. We're gonna have two paragraphs. I'm just gonna delete what I have here and also the anchor tag. So we only have one paragraph tag in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste all the different texts that I have inside my particular um, notes over here because I do have some text already prepared. Now, this is a quote by Dr. Seuss that I found. Again, it does look a little bit weird. That's because of the plugin, but essentially it'll look something like this. Just gonna shift everything up. Inside the quote itself, I went in and said, oh, I want a break here because I think it looks a little bit prettier inside the website. I also went ahead and created a break here. And when it comes to who actually quoted this, which is Dr. Seuss, I gave it two breaks to make it jump down twice on the next line. So essentially just add breaks wherever you think it looks pretty in order to shift things down inside your HTML here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this because I need to have two quotes. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And again, I just added some breaks in where I thought it was necessary to add in the breaks. Now, when I save my document, everything is gonna shift down. And again, I just wanna point out here, don't get confused about this text being down here in the next line. It's not gonna add that extra line break inside the actual website. Like this is not gonna see all of this as white space or anything. This is the exact same thing as doing this. It's just because inside the document here, inside the editor, it looks like this instead. And when you're writing this inside your particular project here as you're following the video, just put everything on one line. Don't, don't you know, jump down to the next line like I'm doing right here just because it's like that on my screen. <laughs> and again, just like with the other one, I added two breaks right before I gave it the name Benjamin Franklin of the person who actually uh, set the quote. And what I'll do here is I'll actually go in and see how this looks like inside the browser. So if I were to close down my editor here and refresh it, you can now see that we have some text going on inside the browser here. Now, nothing has been styled yet. And that's the next step we're gonna do so we can actually make things look pretty. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually add a style sheet so we can actually style all this content inside the browser. Now, right now, we do have two style sheets. We have one that is a reset style sheet, which basically resets all the CSS inside the different browsers. And we have a main.css, which is the main styling that is going to repeat itself across multiple pages. Now, the styling that I'm about to write in this video is going to be styling specifically for this particular page inside my website. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna create a new CSS file inside my CSS folder. So I'm gonna say new file, and I'm gonna name this one index.css. It is important that you take the order into consideration inside your main uh, HTML page here. So right now you can see we have the reset style sheet, we have the main.css, and then I'm going to copy and paste and then change the link so it says index. Dot CSS. And it is important that this one comes after the other two ones because then whatever I write inside the index file is going to overwrite whatever is inside these two documents up here. So the order does matter in terms of like overwriting each other. But before we go inside the index file and start changing things, let's go inside our main.css because I have a couple of things I wanna do in here based on what we did in the past couple of episodes. So we did talk about something called variables, which is essentially when we go in and create a placeholder for a certain value and we can do that inside the root of our document. So we have this available to us everywhere inside the CSS files. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and just 
just delete the name of this variable here. And instead, I'm going to call this one site dash color dash one. And I'm just going to set this one to a color that I've actually picked out here. So I'm just going to say it's going to be hashtag C13584, which is the exact same color that I have inside my logo. So if I were to go back inside the website, you can't see it right now, but my logo has this tiny bit of a magenta, you know, purplish color inside the logo. So that's what I'm copying. I do also want to have a hover version of this color here. So what I can do is I can copy it, paste it below. And you could just go in here inside the color pick and just say you want something a little bit darker. So let's just do that. So we can do something like this. And then we have a darker version of this color here. And I'll change the name to dash hover. So that is going to be the hover version whenever we hover on top of that color on any sort of buttons inside our website. So with these two variables created, I do also want to do something else. I want to create some default styling for all the different text elements inside the website. So right now you can actually see we do already have a default styling for all our anchor tags inside the website. But I do also want to do this for my uh, H1, the paragraph, and then a little bit more when it comes to the anchor tag here. This is going to be very useful a little bit later on when we talk about different ways to size text inside the website. So instead of using pixels, it's actually better to use something called EM or REM, depending on what you prefer to use. So to begin with, let's actually go ahead and create some default styling for the H1 tag. Just going to open up our text here. And what I'll do is I'll start by creating a font size. I'm going to set this one to 25 pixels. Actually, let's make it 26 pixels because that's a little bit better. I'm also going to go and create a line height. So we're going to say line height is going to be 32 pixels. Usually it's just the font size and then add a little bit extra to it. So 32 roughly, you know, it, it might not be perfect inside the website since I haven't seen it yet, but this is kind of like roughly how it would look like when it comes to line height for this particular font size. Um, so going in, we can also add a color. I'm going to set the color to white. So FFF. I'm also going to go ahead and add a font family. So in this case here, it's going to be font family. And we're going to set this one to Roboto because that's a custom font that we inserted in our font import episode. Just in case you don't know where it is, this is the uh, CDN link for the font online. So we can actually just grab it and start using it inside our website to add a custom font. So going back inside, we can actually go ahead and add in a font weight. So we'll say font dash weight and I'll set it to 600, which is kind of like a bold version of it. And I'll also add a transform uppercase, which is not transform, but text transform. And we'll set it to uppercase. Then I'll go ahead and copy paste this and create my paragraph default styling. So instead of H1, I'll say P. I'm going to go ahead and change the font size to 14. I'm also going to change the line height. So we have it set to 18. I'll also make sure that the color is still white and the Roboto is still going to be the font family. I do want to delete my font weight and my uppercase. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this and insert it inside my anchor tag down here just to make sure the anchor tag also has some default styling. And we're just going to keep it like this for now. I think the same styling as the paragraph is OK as the default styling. So with this, we can actually go back inside our index page and we can start doing the customized CSS for this particular page here. So again, just to go back inside the website and see what we've done so far, because we did add some default styling. Uh, if I refresh it, you can see this is the default styling that we now have inside the website when it comes to all the different fonts that we're using right now. Now you will notice something weird because right now inside my HTML, you'll notice that my H1 tag has welcome to my first website. But if I were to go in here, you can see it just says website, huh? What is going on here? Well, remember when we talked about how to make the header up here fixed to the top of the website? When you do that, you rip out the HTML from the page inside the natural flow of all the content, and then you put it somewhere inside the browser, which means that right now, the text is actually going below. If we were to right click and inspect, just to kind of show you here, and go in and say that I want to take my header, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add some CSS, where I say display, none. Just to kind of show what is going on here. So right now you can see, oh, well, the text is in here. It's just behind the header hidden and we can't see it. So what we need to do is we need to take this main container and shift it the same amount of pixels down that our header is when it comes to the height of the header. So we need to do that first inside our CSS. 
And again, just to reset anything you've done in here, if you touched anything inside the inspector, uh, we can actually just go ahead and refresh the page and then everything is back to normal. So going back inside the index.css, I'm going to say I want to target my main container. And it's okay to just kind of style it like this, since this is going to be a CSS document that is only going to be inside my index page. So we can just reference to main without giving it any sort of class name. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll give it a width. I'll set it to 100%, meaning that it's going to go all the way from left to right. I'm also going to go ahead and set a height. And this is where we need to change it so it doesn't go behind the header. So what I'll do is I'll add a 100 view height. And with this view height, we're actually going to go ahead and subtract the same height that our header has inside the website. So right now, if we were to go inside my main.css, go down to where we have the header main, you can see that right now it has a height set to 60 pixels, which means that what I can do is I can go in here, use the calc function that we talked about in the previous episode, and I can take this 100 view height and subtract 60 pixels from it so we actually have the correct height when it comes to how tall it needs to be inside the browser to fit the current viewport that you open the website up in. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a background color just so you can see exactly what is going on here. Now I do already have a color that I want to have for my website which is kind of like a dark blue. So I'm gonna add it in here. You can just copy paste it if you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you exactly what we have so far. So if I were to refresh it, you can see that now we have this blue background, but wait, there's 60 pixels of space at the bottom because we subtracted 60 pixels of the height. So what we need to do now is we need to push it down 60 pixels because the content is still going behind the header. So going inside the CSS, I can now say that I want to add a margin top and I'm gonna push it down 60 pixels. Go back inside the website, refresh it, and then you can see everything gets pushed down. We no longer have any sort of weird background things happening at the bottom, and the text is all appearing inside the actual website. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some background images, and now I'm actually gonna show you a small trick that we haven't talked about. So if I were to add a background image and set a URL, right now I did already have a texture that is inside my image folder, so I'm just gonna go back gonna go inside my images, and I'm gonna get the one called bg.png, which stands for background.png. I'm also gonna go ahead and set some background sizes. So I'm just gonna say background-size. I'm gonna set this one to cover, because I want it to cover the entire background. I do also wanna set a background repeat, and set it to no repeat. And then I do also want to set a position. So right now we have background position set to center. With this saved, I can go back inside the website and now I can see we get this little pattern here because it's actually fitting on top of my website. Now, I want to insert a second background image, which is going to be a portrait of me at the center here. And how do we do that? Because we did already use the background image property inside the CSS here. So what I can do is I can actually add a second image inside the same property here. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste the URL, say comma, and then paste it behind it. Now it is important to note here that there is a hierarchy going on. So right now the first image is going to be on top and the second image is gonna be at the bottom. So right now I do actually want my portrait to be above the little texture that I added in just now. So I can say that I want to insert my portrait, which is right here. And now if we were to go inside the website, refresh it, you can now see that we now have two images. But hey, I'm, I'm really big. And as you can see, I didn't really cut things out too well because I just had to like make something really quick for this video here. Um, so we need to scale things down. So going back in here, I can also go inside my background size and say I don't want to cover, but instead I want to have it 70 view height. And now this is when we need to start talking about sizing when it comes to adjusting browser size inside your website. Because you may have noticed that I'm actually using the view height just like I did before up here. And that's because when I start resizing the browser, it's gonna start scaling in awkward ways if I set it to a fixed amount. So if I were to set this one to pixels, if I were to resize the browser down to be very small, it's gonna be a very big picture inside my website. Um, so what I can do instead is set it to something that is going to change according to when I change the size of the browser. Browser. So when I start changing the height of the browser, it's going to start scaling the image as well. So it gets, you know, smaller and smaller. Um, so what I can do is I can also go and say I don't want it to repeat. And I do want to set this one to bottom because I want to place this one at the center of my screen at the bottom inside this container here. 
So we're to save this, go back inside, refresh it. You can now see that my image is right here instead. And just to demonstrate it here, if I were to actually size down the browser, you can actually see the image is actually adjusting accordingly. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I think it's a really cool thing to sometimes use view height as a measurement when it comes to certain things inside your website. Not everything like text and stuff needs to be done this way, but images and that kind of thing can be done that way. Again, you just need to have the content into consideration and make sure it still looks good when you squeeze it down to a different device. Now, after doing this, I do actually want to add a flex box to this container here because inside my HTML, you can see that this is the main container and we do have two elements that are inside as the direct child element, which is the two div containers. And what I wanna do is I wanna put them next to each other instead. So go inside our CSS here. I can go and say, I want to display as flex. And we can also go ahead and just add a couple of different properties. So for example, justify content. So we can actually have them uh, squeeze over to the side, so to the center, or just like kind of place them where we want to place them inside the browser. So right now I want to set this one to center. I can also align items to make sure that they are not at the top of the website, but they're actually centered when it comes to the vertical axis inside the website. So we can just go ahead and say we want to center it here. So with these, I can actually go inside the website, refresh it, and then you can see it jumps down to the center of my screen, essentially, uh, because that's what we told it to do with the flex content. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start customizing the actual text inside our content here. So what I'll do is I'll jump down to next line, and I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a main container, and inside this main container, we do also have an H1. I could also have said that we have the class, but let's actually go ahead and do that because that might make more sense to people. So right now we have the main intro, which has the H1 inside of it. So it could go back in here and say that we have a class called main intro. And inside that one, we also have an H1. And at this point, the only thing you need to add inside the H1 tag is only the changes you want to happen depending on what we wrote inside as the default styling that we set inside the main.css file. So right now you can see we have all this styling here when it comes to the H1. So you only want to change the things that you want to change about this particular element. So right now I do actually want to change the font size and the line height. So I'm just gonna copy these and paste them in. And I want to change the font size to 96. I do also want to give it a line height of 106. And that is going to make it look something like this inside my website. I do also want to change the paragraph down here and the link. So we're just going to go back inside our CSS and I'm just going to copy paste the, the, the styling that I have here, go down and say not the H1, but the paragraph instead. In this case here, we do actually also have a paragraph inside the other container. So not just inside the main intro, but also inside the, the main quotes. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Either you can go inside your CSS and just say, you know what, let's just remove this particular part of the path. So it's going to target all the paragraphs inside of here, or you can just go ahead and copy this, write comma, and then add in a second path. In this case, it's going to be main quotes. And in this sort of way, you're actually targeting two different paths. But I think in this case here, writing less is more. So let's actually just go ahead and delete and delete the main intro here. So we have it like this instead. When it comes to the paragraph here, I want to set it to 18 pixels. And I do also want to set the line height to 30 pixels. Now that does seem like a lot according to my notes. So let's actually just go in and refresh the browser just to double check. Well, okay, that, that seems fine. So 30 pixels of line height is perfectly fine. And as you'll see, it'll actually change the text on both sides since that's what we decided when we removed that uh, class name inside the path there. So going back inside our CSS, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna style the actual anchor tag, which is the link that we have. Now in this case here, I do want to set my uh, sizing the exact same way. Now in this case, we can actually just go ahead and remove the line height since it's just one line of text we have in here. But what I'll do is I'll add a display block. So we can actually add a background color to this one. So block, and we're gonna add a background color. Now we do already have the color set inside our CSS here, because if I were to go inside my main CSS, we did already set a variable at the top here that says site color one. So I can take this one, go back inside, and set my var 
parentheses and paste it in here, which is going to set it to the color that we set inside the variable inside the main.css. So with this one, what I want to do is want to add a padding just to make a little bit of spacing to the sides and to the top of this box here that the text is going to be inside of. And this is a very good way of actually centering the text inside the container since we're adding spacing on the top and bottom at the same time. So what I can do is I can set a padding to 10 pixels from top and bottom and 20 pixels from the left and right. And this is the point where you're gonna see something a bit weird. So if I were to actually refresh this and go inside my browser, you're gonna notice that we do have it here, but why is it going all the way to the, to the entire width of this container here? And that is because right now it doesn't actually have a width set inside because we set it to display block. So what I can do is I can go in here and say I want to add a width and set it to fit content. If we were to do that, refresh it, you can now see that it only fits the content in here. Now, taking a look at this, I do think that the button is very close up towards the text here. So I'm going to go in here and say margin dash top and set this one to my note says 30 pixels. I'm going to go and trust my notes here. So going back in, we can refresh it. And now I can see there's a little bit of spacing going on here between the link and the paragraph text. The next thing we're gonna style is going to be the actual paragraphs over here on the right side. So going back inside our CSS and scrolling down, I'm going to say that we have the main container. We do also have a class called main-quotes. And inside of here, we do have a paragraph. And what I'll do to start with here is I'm actually gonna go and add a small border to the left side, just so we have a little bit of something to group the quote together. Uh, it'll make sense in a second. So what I'll do is I'll say we have a border dash left. I'm going to set it to four pixels and a solid line. So not a dashed line or anything weird like that, but just a solid line and a color. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and say we want to use the same color as we did up here. So the variable called site color one, I'm just going to paste that in here. And with this saved, just to show you what is happening here is I'm actually going to add this little border on the left side of my text here. A couple of things we want to do is we want to add a little bit of spacing between these two different quotes. So, you know, it's not one big border of a line. And I do also want to push out the border a little bit because right now it's touching the text. So what I can do in order to do that is I can add a padding to the left side, which is going to push out the border. Now this is not going to work with margin since we're taking all the content and pushing away, but adding a padding means that we're extending the container for this particular piece of content, which in this case is the text in here. So what I can do is I can add a padding and I can set this one to something like 20 pixels. And just to show how that looks like, if we were to refresh, you can now see you have a little bit of spacing here. I can also go ahead and add a margin and I'm gonna set this one to 40 pixels from top and bottom and zero when it comes to left and right. Saving this, refreshing, and now you can see we have that good spacing. So we have them grouped in two pieces of content instead of one big quote. And things are starting to take shape in here. You can actually see it's starting to look like content, uh, but we do have a couple of issues, which is that right now everything is centered, like it's touching each other and we need to create some spacing between them. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a styling for the two containers that we have in here. So in this case here, we can actually just copy what we have here, paste it down and not target the text, but just the container for it. Then I'll copy paste it again. And what I'll do is I'll change the name for the first one. So not main dash quotes, but main dash intro. And I'm just gonna go and delete all the content we have inside uh, when it comes to all the properties in here. So what I want to do now is I want to take the content inside my browser and I want to take this piece of content here and push it to the left side. And I want to take the quotes over here and I want to push them to the right side. And this is the moment where we need to start talking about the flow of the content. Because right now, if we were to go in and do something with my flex box, maybe create a gap or maybe, you know, add a flex grow in order to grow out the content. Everything that we do right now with Flexbox is gonna make it look not the way that I want it to inside my page here. Just to kind of demonstrate what I mean, if I were to go in here and say that the main container, which is up here, were to have something like a gap. Let's actually go and just add a column gap and I'll set this one to, let's say 20 view height and go inside the browser and refresh it, you're gonna notice that it will do it, but it's gonna push the content equally out to the side, uh, which I don't want to do because I want this over here to be a little bit more to the left side than this content over here, because now this is disappearing completely away. I also can't use flex grow, because if I were to do that and go down to my content down here and say I want to add a flex dash grow and set this one to maybe one, 
and the other one down here to two, just to kind of demonstrate what is happening here. Uh, you're gonna notice that the content is shifting to the side. So it's actually starting over here, but this one is, is starting here. Um, so we can't really do that. So what we're gonna do instead is I'm just gonna go and reset everything here just so we have everything looking normal, is that I want to add a position relative because that is something in this particular case that we can do without it breaking any sort of content inside the website. Position relative is something that you need to think about before you use it. Like, is it appropriate in this situation here? Will it ruin any other content of the page or ruin the flow of the site? You're not supposed to use position relative just to move content. You're supposed to use margins or paddings or flexbox in order to do that. But if you have a moment like this one, where it's not gonna ruin anything else and there's no other solution than using position relative, then it's okay to use it. So what I'll do here, so I'm gonna go in and say my main intro is gonna have a position set to relative and I want to move it away from the right side a certain amount. Now in this case here, I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to 20 view height. And again, the reason I'm doing view height here is because then it's gonna adjust according to the height of my browser. And the second one down here with the quotes, I just wanna move for view height. So with this saved, I can go inside the browser refresh it, and then you can see we kind of shift things out a little bit here. We do of course want to make sure that it doesn't say right down here, but it does say left when it comes to the second one with the quotes. So doing that again, refreshing, you can now see it looks like how I want it to look inside the browser. And again, you can move these independently. It's not gonna get ruined or anything. You can just like shift them out. Just be aware that not everyone has a very wide screen when it comes to a computer. So if I were to scale this and do this instead, some people might have a computer with this width instead. Uh, just make sure the content is still, you know, viewable inside the screen and doesn't get pushed so far out that some screens don't have the spacing for the content. This is also the moment where you would actually start talking about responsive design because if we were to scale the browser down and oh no, we start cutting the content, then using responsive design inside our CSS, we would start shifting content around or resizing the text or removing certain content that isn't really that important to have inside the website. For example, the quotes over here, we could actually just do completely without them. Um, so responsive design is also something you start getting into when it comes to like, you know, making sure all the content fits inside the browser. But we're not gonna talk about responsive design right now because that's an entire video in itself. So we're just gonna leave that. But what I do want to do is I want to take the second quote down here and I actually want to push it out just a little bit more, just the second one, not the, the first one. So what I can do is I can go inside my CSS here and where I do have the text quote up here, I can copy paste it and I can add a pseudo class called nth child, so nth dash child. So when we have a certain container that has certain child elements inside of it, in this case here, we have a couple of paragraphs inside the main quotes container. In this case here, I can say I want to target every second child inside this container here. So every second paragraph inside my main quotes. So I can actually use something like this. And what I can then do is I can just go in and say, I want to add a margin to the left side. And I can set this one to something like a hundred pixels. So where to do this, go inside the browser, only the second one is going to get pushed out when it comes to these quotes down here. Now, there is something else I want to change here as well, which is the fact that everything is kind of like completely censored right now. And I want to just push it up just a little bit when it comes to, you know, pushing it up at the top of the browser. So what I can do is I can go inside my main intro and my main quotes, and I can add a padding bottom. You could also technically in this case here use relative if you wanted to, but let's just go ahead and use padding bottom since I do think that you should avoid using position as much as possible. Like don't start relying on it, just use it whenever it's necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a padding bottom and I'm gonna set it to eight view height. So just move it up just a little bit and copy paste it. So we have it on both of these, go inside my browser and then you'll notice that it gets pushed up just a little bit inside the browser there. And something you need to always make sure you check for is if I were to scale this down, how does it actually look like if I start resizing the browser, does it still scale everything accordingly? And right now I think it does. Even when we get down to the point where we can't really fit everything inside the browser anymore, then it's still fitting like how I want it to be inside the website. My arm is still you know, curving accordingly to all the elements in here. Um, everything is still centered. It's not like jumping up at the top of the screen up here. And again, when it comes to scaling this way, like I said, we're using responsive design things inside our CSS using media queries. So for now, don't worry too much about the side, but the top definitely needs to be how it needs to be inside the browser here, which in this case is looking perfectly fine. Now there is one more very important thing to make sure we do inside our CSS, which is to make sure 
that when my content start getting so much that we can actually start scrolling inside the website, that all the content I have in here goes behind the header when we start scrolling upwards, because right now we don't have any set index set to any of the content. So what I wanna make sure I do is I go inside my CSS, inside the main.css, go down to the header here and make sure it does have a set index set to a thousand. And if you ever see any sort of content go in front of it, when you start scrolling, what you can do is you can go in here and say that, for example, the main container is going to have a set index set to 100 instead, which is less than a thousand. So this is always going to jump behind when it comes to jumping behind the header once you start scrolling. But with this, we now have everything that we need in order to have this hero section. And again, this is just a basic hero section. I came up with this very quickly. In my opinion, there's too much white space going on around the content here. So like you could probably do something about that. Uh, but for now, I think this is perfectly fine for a tutorial and just kind of show you how to make a hero section, how to shift content around and do different things. There's definitely a lot of new stuff in this video here. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.